Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here, and in this uh, episode of Zig in Depth, we're going to be talking about strings in Zig, okay? Uh, one of the things that seems surprising to many people coming from other languages when they start out uh, learning Zig is that Zig doesn't have a specific string data structure type. Um, basically, in Zig, strings are just uh, slices of bytes, okay? And um, at first, uh, even I was a little uh, surprised and shocked <laughs> to not find a, a string type with uh, tons and tons of methods uh, like you find in other languages. But when you come to think about it, um, Zig being a true low-level language, um, it makes sense that uh, it doesn't provide a built-in uh, string type as part of the language. It does provide all the tools you may need to build your own string type. And you can decide however you want that data structure to be. Uh, in terms of, for example, uh, handling uh, the different encodings uh, like uh, ASCII or Unicode, UTF-8, UTF-16, UTF-32. Um, and uh, it, you have full uh, power and, and, and freedom to do whatever you want in terms of building uh, your own data structures and specifically handling uh, strings. What we are going to see is that SIG does provide some basic uh, string handling in terms of the literals when you want to specify uh, these uh, slices, slices of bytes. And um, uh, also there are a couple of uh, namespaces in the standard library that allow you to handle uh, special situations like for example uh, Unicode uh, processing and uh, ASCII. Um, so let's get started. Here, first of all, we're going to see that uh, in string, when you have a string literal, like you see here within the double quotes, this is actually uh, a pointer to a sentinel terminated array. And the sentinel is zero, which is uh, also known as the null character. Um, and this uh, choice by, by the language designers is a very uh, wise one because it automatically makes uh, string literals uh, work seamlessly with existing C code, okay? In C, uh, it's a long uh, established tradition that uh, usually when dealing with strings, they're basically just uh, a series of bytes with a null terminator or that zero uh, character, right? So uh, as, as Zig uh, provide the default type for its literals uh, is totally compatible with uh, that type of handling of strings in C. So um, it makes it really easy when you're dealing with uh, C libraries from uh, within Zig, okay? And here we are defining uh, this uh, string here, hello. And we are printing out here, it says type of hello. And we're using once again, the built-in type of to see the type of that uh, string literal. So let's run this. And as you can see here, it says type of hello is indeed a pointer to a const uh, array with five length five and a sentinel zero of U8, okay? So this is basically uh, how Zig uh, treats the type of string literals. And you have to be aware also that the bytes of, of these uh, string literals are going to be included in, in the binary that's generated. Uh, so it makes sense also that, that it's, a, it's, it's const and you can't modify that, okay? It's read only. Now you're also going to notice when working with Zig code that uh, if you need a more general purpose type for strings, um, and I mean what I mean when I say general purpose is that, for example, let's look at this output once again. Um, if I were uh, to write a function that handles this specific type, pointer to const 50u8, 
then uh, that function wouldn't be able to deal with a string that has a, a different length. Okay, so if I just add one character to that string, then uh, if I have a function that has a parameter of that type, um, it wouldn't work uh, with that function. So um, the the idiomatic way of dealing uh, with that is let's look at this uh, function definition that we have here. This function here called print string, as you can see, its only parameter s is of type slice of const u8. Okay, um, so uh, here basically you see that in Zig, when you want to deal with strings in general um, and not in spe the specific uh, types that, that include the length, as is the case with uh, arrays and sentinel terminated, uh, terminated arrays. Uh, you will see that the type that will be used is the slice of const u8. And this, uh, with time, you you're, in your mind, is going to automatically see this, the slice const u8 syntax, and you're going to convert this in your mind to string, okay? <laughs> At least that's what happened in my mind. So whenever you see in zip code that you, you're, you're working with slice const u8, um, in, a, in, in the great majority of cases, it's indeed uh, you're working with strings, okay? So uh, that type of the, the default type for the string literal, which is the sentinel terminated array, will coerce here into the slice of const u8 when, when calling this function, okay? Strings in Zig um, can include uh, a minimal set of escape sequences, and usually the escape sequences as in other languages, are uh, defined within a string uh, by using the backslash. Here we have the backslash T for a tap. Here, backslash double quote. We want to have a double quote inside the double quoted string. Back, backslash single quote, which we want to have a single quote when, when we see further, further along when we're dealing with uh, code point literals. They're enclosed in single quotes, so you can have a single quote escaped like this. And you can also insert uh, specific bytes inside of a string with the backslash x and two digits. Okay, here uh, 65 would be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the letter e. Here we have uh, an, uh, an escape that provides the ability to insert a Unicode uh, code point directly using the code of that code point. So it's backslash u, and within the curly brace is uh, the, any, any required number of digits to specify the code point code itself, okay? You can find lots of tables on the internet where you can uh, uh, see the actual hexadecimal uh, code for a code point, and you insert that here between the curly braces, and, and you get that code point inserted into your string. And the backslash n for the new line and backslash r for a character turn. Okay, and that output is what we see uh, here in escapes. Okay, here would be the, like the tab and the double quote, the single quote, the letter e, the letter uh, e with the acute accent, which, which is the one that that we use the the Unicode code point code for, and then we have the new line and the character turn, which are invisible here. Okay. In Zig, um, you can index into a string, but you have to be aware that when you index into a string, you're, you're, you obtain a single byte, okay? The, the byte that, that's precisely at that index that you specify. So unlike other languages that have a string data structure and may return uh, a code point or uh, a series of bytes uh, in the form of a graphene cluster. In Zig, it's just the basic uh, bytes uh, within that string. So when you, you when you do the indexing, you will get just one byte. Okay. And here uh, we are demonstrating how with uh, the index two. We can, we can use several uh, format specifiers. In this case, when we don't use any format specifier, just the curly braces here empty, we're going to get the, the actual uh, numeric code for that uh, byte. Here, with uh, using the C, the zero here is for the position of the argument 
that we want to print out. So since we're printing out the same argument, the first one, and it's indexed by zero, we have the zero here. The C will print out uh, this uh, argument as an ASCII character, if it's possible. And the U will print it out as a Unicode uh, code point. Okay, so uh, let's see that output over here. And here we go. We have uh, hello index two, the numeric code, which is uh, 108, and the ASCII form of that uh, byte, which is L, and also L in the Unicode, uh, which is the same because. Uh, in this case, we're dealing with UTF-8 encoded text, and UTF-8 is a superset of ASCII. So um, basically, all of those ASCII characters are, are also uh, represented inside of uh, UTF-8. Okay, That's what we see right here. Uh, it's uh, important to note that all ZIG uh, source code indeed is uh, for, uh, encoded as UTF-8. But you can insert uh, non-UTF-8 uh, characters in a string by using the backslash x escape syntax here with, the, with two hexadecimal digits. So in this case, uh, in this string, we are inserting um, E9, which uh, would be the byte uh, from the Latin 1 supplement uh, corresponding to the letter uh, E with an acute accent, okay? But uh, as we will see in the output, uh, most terminals uh, are these days are, are uh, hardwired to display UTF-8. So this character will just simply not display, but it's there, okay? That byte, we're inserting it directly and it's there. So there's an example that in Zig, we don't have, like in other languages, uh, a language level uh, rule that says that you have to have a UTF-8 only. And if you don't, you get an error. Well, that's not the case in Zing, okay? And here, we're inserting that same code, but this time using uh, the Unicode uh, syntax. And uh, as we will see here, when we look at the lengths of these, uh, of these strings, we're going to see that in this case, the length is only five bytes, okay? Which corresponds to the H, to that uh, E character, the L, L, and the L. But here, since this is Unicode and will be encoded as UTF-8, this uh, E with an acute accent is going to turn into two more, into two bytes. So we'll have six, six bytes in length, okay? So let's look at that in the output, and effectively, here we go, okay? So here we see that that E is not printing out because it isn't UTF-8. But we, we get the length of five, so we do have five bytes. And here we do see the character because this is valid UTF-8. And we see that it's a length of six. So this E with the acute accent is taking up two bytes because that's the encoding in Unicode, UTF-8. Okay. Now, uh, we take a look at multi-line strings in Zig. This is another uh, aspect of Zig syntax that may come in as a surprise for many people. And many people at first find it a little jarring, but uh, once you get used to it, you, you see that um, it does have a certain uh, aesthetic appeal to it. <laughs> uh, it's basically almost like the inverse of comments, right? Instead of the four slashes, we use two backslashes, okay? And you can start out in the next line after uh, your variable or constant definition. And uh, you keep on each line that you add and that starts with the two backslashes is going to be part of this multi-line string. And multi-line strings don't process any escapes, okay? So when we look at the output, this backslash n here is not going to be converted into a new line. It's going to be printed out literally, okay? And once we finish, we have this semicolon here to uh, indicate that we're finished with this uh, multi-line string. And here we go. This is the multi-line string right here, okay? And as we can, uh, as as I said, you can see here that the new line isn't processed as uh, a special character. It's just literally printed out the backslash and the end. Okay.
Next up, we're going to see that uh, in, in Zig, which is another difference from other languages, uh, we don't have characters, okay, or character literals. What we do have is code point literals, okay, because uh, if you look at the Unicode specification, you really won't find uh, a specific definition of a character. You will find a specific definition of code points, which are the, the encoding in a numeric form for the characters of the Unicode namespace, or, or, or character space, uh, excuse me. Here we're defining uh, a Ziwana, okay? And we use the single quotes when, we, when we're going to uh, specify a code point literal. And here we have our little friendly Iguana friend here. And uh, when you need a specific type for code points, um, what's normally used in Zig is the type U21, okay? In other languages, you'll see that they'll use a 32-bit uh, unsigned integer or a 32-bit signed integer. But uh, in Zig, since we have arbitrary width integers, you can use an unsigned 21-bit integer, which is uh, just the size necessary to hold all of the uh, character code point space of Unicode, okay? Which is roughly more than a million something characters. So uh, here, we have the lightning bolt uh, inside the single quotes, okay? And here we are printing out uh, in this string using the U format specifier. So we get the Unicode code point printout instead of just the numbers. Uh, so we can see that output right here. Here we have our Zidwana friend and our lightning bolt, okay? So that's how you specify code point literals in Zig. And as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you will find in stud Unicode uh, lots of functions that let you work with uh, different aspects of Unicode encoding, UTF-8 and UTF-16 specifically. And um, they can come in really useful when you want to deal with code points uh, in, your, in, your, in your text when, when, when programming in Zig. And also, if you're dealing with uh, just ASCII text, uh, you will find in stud ASCII um, also a series of useful and handy functions here. We're looking at, uh, here <clears throat> at this one is upper, which is a really common use case. You want to know if a letter is uppercase or lowercase? Well, in stud ASCII, you have that function, okay? Uh, in the case of Unicode here, we are testing out if uh, our, our string here is valid uh, UTF-8, okay? And if we go out to the output, we will see that that question about is it valid UTF-8? It's false because we are directly inserting one of those non-UTF-8 bytes in the string. And uh, the question about uppercase is true, okay? So uh, with that, uh, we have pretty much what, uh, what uh, strings and, and code points, uh, Unicode and ASCII and ZIG looks like. Here I have this comment at the end. Uh, I'm, I'm the author of a couple of libraries uh, that precisely deal with uh, Unicode and, and strings in ZIG. One of them is Ziglyph which uh, offers a lot of functions uh, according to the Uni Unicode specification. Um, and the other one is Zigster, which is a UTF-8 um, string type. But uh, since we haven't talked about how to use dependencies and how to include dependencies in your SIG project, we're going to leave uh, examples of, of using uh, these libraries for later on the course, okay? So with that, I hope you find this uh, useful when dealing with text in Zig. Uh, do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.